This video is the last guide that you will ever need to use your Elgato 4KX capture card with your Mac. Either you're using an Xbox, you're capturing from a PS5, or you're capturing from a PC, or basically any device, and uh, you're using your Mac for capturing, this is the last guide that you'll ever need. I've checked out a lot of online videos and uh, they were telling the correct steps, but the details were missing out. And all the hiccups and all the issues that can arise while using this capture card with your Mac, there were no details. I had to like spend a lot of time figuring it out for myself. So first, after you unbox, do not just uh, be eager to hook it up with your um, PlayStation and your monitor and connect it to your Mac and start recording. So it doesn't work like that. So first, once you unbox it, you will have to go to the Elgato website. So this is just elgato.com and select Mac and download this particular software. It's called Elgato Capture Device Utility. So once you download it, it'll look something like this. And uh, you will have to use the USB-C cable that came with your Elgato capture card and use that cable and connect the device to your Mac. And just double click on it and it will open up it will look something like this. And uh, this is how you will see it for the first time, okay? So everything else, you can leave it as is. The first thing that you'll need to do, you will have to update the firmware on it. So click on the firmware update and update your software. It'll just take a couple minutes and once that is done, that's perfect. But another big issue that arises with it, by default, I'm not sure why, the Elgato capture card will be connected as a USB device, but the speed will only be five gigabits per second. And to take the full advantage of the Elgato 4KX capture card, you will have to have the device be recognized and capable of 10 gigabits per second. So, and this option is not enabled by default, as you can see over here, you're not able to see any option. So once this, um, Elgato capture device utility is open. You will have to hold function button on the keyboard. Let me hold it real quick. So as I will hold the function button, you will see another pop-up over here. But if you're doing it for the first time on your Mac, you will see a little bit of different pop-up. So once I click and hold, mine just gives this option right here. It says USB 10 gigabits per second requires Mac OS 14.4 or later. And I'll just turn it on. And this is the pop-up that you will receive. It says turn on USB 10 gigabits per second mode. Once enabled, you'll Elgato, your Elgato 4KX will no longer work with the Mac OS versions earlier than 14.4. Okay, so turn it on and it'll kinda do a restart of the device. And once that's done, even though it does a restart by automatic, I will recommend unplugging it and plugging it back in. So just to make sure it properly uh, gets a reboot, okay? And now, as you can see, it will get enabled by default whenever you connect, so you don't need this anymore. But if you're recording HDR, then I will recommend turning on HDR tone mapping so you will be able to see all the colors in OBS Studio. So this is done. You can close this one, all right? And now, for connecting it on your uh, PlayStation 5, because on Xbox, you don't need to meddle with any kind of settings. But if you need to connect it with the PlayStation 5 or 5 Pro, you will have to go into settings. So I'll just show you here. Go into settings and go into system and then go into HDMI. And then this is the option right here. It says enable HDCP. So you will have to have it disabled. And if you have it enabled, all you will receive is a black screen and no um, pass through will happen whatsoever. And you won't be able to see your video. You won't be able to record it, just nothing, okay? So this needs to be disabled on the PlayStation devices. On Xbox, you don't have to just plug and play. So now, everything is done. Now it's time to hook uh, hook it up. So the first thing that you will need to do, so that's the capture card right there. You are seeing one extra HDMI cable because that's coming from my Xbox. So in the box of the Elgato 4KX, you will receive one HDMI cable 
So that is the HDMI 2.1 capable, that's very fast. And with your PlayStation or with your Xbox Series S or X, you will receive another HDMI 2.1 cable. So you can use any of the two cables as output, as input, so it doesn't matter. So use one cable, coming out of the HDMI port of your PlayStation 5 and connecting to the HDMI input port of the Elgato 4KX and use the other HDMI cable going from the Elgato 4KX's HDMI out port and connect it to your TV or your monitor's uh, HDMI port at the back. And once that is done, then you will have to connect the USB cable that came with the Elgato 4KX. So once you connect all the HDMI cables, so one cable will be coming from your PlayStation and going to the HDMI in port on the Elgato 4KX. The other HDMI cable will be going from the HDMI out port on the Elgato 4KX to your TV or your monitor's back. And after that, you will have to connect the USB cable, this one. This is the one that came inside the box with the Elgato 4KX. Do not use any other cable, like your phone cable or anything, because these are just for charging purposes. Like they can transfer data, but the speeds are just will be terrible and you won't be able to use it whatsoever. So use the cable that was included in the box. Then you will open OBS Studio. And so this is, I have already created the scene because I'm using it. So for this video, let's create a new scene and I will tell how to do it, okay? So we will just name it Elgato and click OK. As you can see, it's just totally black at the moment. And uh, this is how you will have it for the first time. First things first, you will go here on the source page and click on the little plus button and then you will select the video capture device. Once you select it, name it whatever you want to name it and click OK and then select click on the devices and select the device that you want to select. So I want to select the 4KX, Elgato 4KX. Once you click it and the image will pop up and I want you to disable this use preset button because this is uh, this will use like uh, some of the optimized low quality visuals. You won't be able to take the full advantage of the full uh, bit rate of the video uh, that you're receiving. So disable it and then resolution the maximum that you want to go 4K uh, 2160 and as you can see simple FPS value and nothing is popping up. And if you just, what I was doing at first, I said that nothing is popping up. So maybe it just defaults to 60 FPS or the highest one that the monitor is pushing out. And I just clicked okay and I called it a day. And the video that was getting captured, like the because the settings of, of the OBS studio is 60 FPS, but the devices, source devices output was only 30 fps so it was 30 fps video getting converted to 60 fps and looking terrible if that makes sense so what you will need to do you will have to scroll <laughs> okay so you'll have to scroll and use the input format nv12 all right once you do that color space you will have to select cs709 all right and the video range there is just one option for limited, okay? And then you will click on this option right here. So as you can see, now you're getting options in 4K all the way up to 144 FPS. But my TV sadly is only 60 Hertz. <laughs> so I'll just uh, record videos in 60 FPS. And over here, so these are the settings. So you'll have to scroll down this is the settings and this step was not mentioned in any of the videos at all and i was like about to kill myself because my videos were in 4k but the frame rate was just terrible in it, in them so once this is done just click ok and now this is perfect but there is no audio so now you will have to click on this add button add source button again then now select audio input capture and just name it whatever you want and then click OK and in the device select Elgato 4KX and click OK. And now as you can see there is audio in it. So let me just uh, use my controller to move something on the screen and you will see the audio. See there. 
audio is coming through. Perfect. So now we have audio, now we have video. And the other thing, if you want to like take full advantage and record in highest quality possible, so you'll have to go to the settings over here. And then first of all, click on video over here and change the canvas resolution. So if you are clicking on the drop down and the top resolution that it's providing is the resolution of the laptop or the computer screen that you're running OBS on. <laughs> And uh, so if that's the case, you can just double click and enter the values manually. So just type them in there. So 3840 by 2160 is the 16 ratio nine, 4K, and then output scale resolution will be exactly the same, 3840 by 2160, and FPS value, 60 FPS. So that's perfect. Once that is done, click apply and click okay. Then you go to the output. Okay, and the output mode most probably will be simple by default. So click on advanced. And uh, for streaming, I don't stream, so I'm not sure. You will have to watch some other videos for this. And I just do the recording, so click on record. So these are my settings. And I record, my recording format is MKV. So because MKV format is the most safest one, if you record in MP4 and uh, OBS Studio crashes, and it will, <laughs> and uh, so you will lose your entire recording. So I will recommend recording this because uh, when it crashes, this particular format will preserve your recorded file. So these are the other settings, Apple HEVC hardware encoder and audio track just one I have here and uh, then the encoder settings CBR and uh, some people prefer I think ABR but I just prefer CBR and the bitrate of my video I just went to the full extent 150 megabits per second as you can see 150,000 kilobits per second okay so this is like really really high bitrate for the video and the quality on the video is just super awesome and the audio track bitrate is 320 for highest quality possible because I'm only just using one track. And so because if you're saying that how will you be able to edit the video if uh, you're recording in MKV format because none of the mainstream editing softwares do not support MKV straight out of the box. So you will have to go to this advanced page right here. And over here, the color profile, if you're recording in SDR, I'll just choose NV12 8-bit 420, two planes, and color space Rec 709, and uh, there's the peak brightness, and uh, that's HD, uh, HDR peak brightness, but I don't use HDR, so I'll just leave it as is. And the one thing that you will need to turn on is this. In the recording section, you will have to check this box off automatically remux to mp4 so what it'll do once you click on the stop recording button after you're done recording your game session it will automatically save the video as mkv file and a converted high quality mp4 file with the same bitrate and exact same quality this is super, super awesome. And whenever your OBS crashes, and it will, because OBS is nature, <laughs> and uh, so you will be safe, and you will not r lose your data, or you will not lose your progress. Okay, so once that is done, once you're happy with the settings, just apply and click OK. And now you will just enjoy. So this is my controller. And uh, let's play Mafia Definitive Edition. I just downloaded it yesterday. And so first of all, I will click on here, start recording. And as you can see over here at the little bottom thing. So over here, as you can see, the recording has started. So see, this is now recording in MKV format. And once I stop recording, Remux recordings, see that pop up? My recording will get saved to my downloads folder. This is, here it is. So this is the MKV file. And as you can see, this is 2.93 gigabytes. And this is MP4 file. Should be same size, 2.93 gigabytes. And if you're happy with this, you can just get rid of this one. 